Zolpidem is one of the most popular sleep drugs. It was introduced in the 1980s and has helped replace benzodiazepines in the treatment of insomnia. Most users don't find it to be notably recreational, especially at medical doses, but some people do encounter effects like euphoria, anxiety reduction, and hallucinations at certain doses. Among the positive effects are insomnia reduction, euphoria, closed and open eye visuals, greater sexual desire, anxiety reduction, and mood improvement. Its negative effects can include confusion, cognitive impairment, amnesia, dizziness, unsteady gait, nausea, headache, and nightmares. A common benign or potentially negative effect is memory loss, specifically interior grade amnesia. This form of memory loss leaves you with little to no memory of what occurred after the drug began working. Not everyone experiences this when using a medical dose, but many people don't remember getting into bed or falling asleep. While the previously mentioned negative effects can appear, the most common reasons people stop taking Zolpidem are that it doesn't work or that it leaves them sedated in the morning. Sedation or impairment that persists beyond seven hours is very uncommon, however. Compared to benzodiazepines, Zolpidem produces similar levels of insomnia reduction, but it produces less anticonvulsant action, muscle relaxation, and anxiety reduction. By far, the most common use is for insomnia. It's important to understand that non-drug treatment based around sleep hygiene, exercise, and therapy is worth trying before a drug like Zolpidem is introduced. When Zolpidem is taken, it reliably improves sleep onset, though it tends to only benefit sleep maintenance for a few hours. You can sometimes improve its sleep maintaining ability with a controlled release version of the drug. It doesn't infringe on sleep architecture. If anything, it increases the amount of slow wave sleep sleep, which is a positive change. Zolpidem is specifically recommended for short-term and non-daily use. Despite that, doctors often prescribe it as a long-term treatment, and there is evidence that it remains effective even after months. This depends on the individual and more research is needed, but efficacy appears to be maintained in the long term. Studies have indicated little to no loss of efficacy over a period of four weeks, and when the duration is extended to months, a small percentage of users do require dose increases, but most can stick to the same dose. Because of individual differences, there are some cases where people quickly need to increase the dose in order to obtain the hypnotic effects. This occasionally results in over 50 and even over 100 milligrams being used per day, which can lead to significant physical dependence. Most people don't encounter this kind of dose escalation. Nevertheless, using it only in the short term or non-daily is recommended. An odd part of Zolpidem's effects is that for some people, it causes open or closed eye hallucinations. These effects appear in a multitude of ways. Some users report minor closed eye effects, like colors and patterns, or more intense closed eye visualizations. Others report open eye effects ranging from psychedelic-like alterations to hard hallucinations, like you would normally encounter on a delirium. Actual delirium is exceedingly rare though. Examples of these effects can be found in some case reports. In two cases, 10 to 15 milligrams produced hallucinations of dwarfs sitting by the fireplace, dancing mascots, a tongue-shaped robot, and ghosts flying around a TV set. That's the same dose that nearly all other users would simply feel sedated from. Hallucinatory experiences from Zolpidem also differ in some other ways, such as in the extent of memory impairment. Some people don't remember their hallucinations, some people remember them to the same extent as a dream, and others have full vivid memories of what happened. Also, these effects can either be accompanied by the usual hypnotic activity, or they can replace it. This means that some people still fall asleep perfectly fine, while others are left in a sedated hallucinatory state for one to three hours. Most of the time, these experiences are not troublesome, but psychotic and terror responses have been reported in a few instances. Along with visual effects, tactile and auditory hallucinations occur for some people, but they're even less common. The vast majority of people will not experience these effects at 5 to 15 milligrams. A somewhat larger percentage may experience them when using 20 to 30 milligrams or more. Vivid nightmares can also take place, and they're more common than waking hallucinations, though most people still don't encounter them. Sleepwalking activities have received a lot of publicity, and while they are rare, they've been reported in many users. Among these activities are eating, walking, sex, and driving. This may come from boosting or altering slow-wave sleep, and people usually have no memory of what they did while sleeping. It's most often reported with someone's first use, or with higher than medical doses. A combination of paradoxical and uncommon effects is sometimes seen, contributing 
leading to recreational use and addiction. These effects include stimulation, euphoria, anxiety reduction, and mood lift. When these effects are encountered, they may be mostly or entirely free from the usual sedation, allowing Zolpidem to be taken during the day. Another application for the drug that has received some attention is in cases of coma and brain injury. On multiple occasions, the administration of Zolpidem has improved someone's condition in coma, aphasia, and catatonia. There are also cases where it hasn't worked, but the fact that it has any efficacy is intriguing. It appears the substance may increase blood flow in areas of dormant tissue, essentially returning some level of activity. In one case, a patient was suffering from permanent speech problems caused by a stroke three years prior. The aphasia left her unable to form a single full word. Eventually, she was prescribed Zolpidem for insomnia about 20 minutes after she took her first dose. Both she and her family suddenly noticed she could communicate more clearly. Future tests found the drug reliably allowed her to repeat single words and the first words of sentences. Communication was still difficult, but it was clearly improved. Non-selective GABA drugs, like benzodiazepines, have not been effective in the same patients. When taken for its sleep effects, Zolpidem works in 10 to 30 minutes and works for about four or five hours. Some level of impairment may exist for up to six or seven hours. When it's used for euphoria, anxiety reduction, or hallucinatory actions, the effects last for one to three hours. Zolpidem is an imidazopyridine that is structurally distinct from benzodiazepines. The GABA-A receptor complex can be made up of different subunits, which come in various forms. Both GABA and benzodiazepine sites are available, with Zolpidem operating at the latter. It is believed to differ from benzodiazepines because of its selective binding. Zolpidem preferentially binds to receptors containing the A1 subunit, and at higher than medical doses, it may also affect A2 and A3 receptor complexes. This selective activity provides Zolpidem with adequate sedative effects, but a comparatively small level of muscle relaxation and anxiety reduction. None of the metabolites are active. The dose of Zolpidem varies depending on the effects you're looking for. When an instant release version is used medically, the range is 5 to 10 milligrams. 10 milligrams tends to be the most effective dose, beyond which little benefit is provided. 5 milligrams is recommended for new users and is the recommended dose for women. With a controlled release version, the dose is 6.25 to 12.5 milligrams. Again, 6.25 milligrams is recommended for new users and is the recommended dose for women. Sublingual administration ranges from 1.75 to 3 milligrams and from 5 to 10 milligrams. 1.75 and 5 milligrams are recommended for women. The dosing range depends on if you're taking it for sleep onset or to overcome middle of the night awakenings. Orally, a light dose is 5 to 15 milligrams, a common dose is 15 to 25 milligrams, and a strong dose is 25 to 40 milligrams. While those are the recreational doses, using more than 20 milligrams makes memory loss, impairment, and extreme sedation likely. Zolpidem was developed in Europe in the 1980s. At the time it was created, there was a clear market for a non-benzodiazepine sleep drug. Benzodiazepine use for insomnia would eventually decline over the coming decades, partly because of Zolpidem and other non-benzodiazepines like Zopiclone. It was approved in France in 1987, and it entered clinical practice between 1987 and 1988. Other parts of Europe would eventually receive the drug. In 1992, it was approved in the US and was the first drug of its kind to be allowed for insomnia. The drug was first marketed by Searle, a unit of Monsanto, in 5 and 10 milligram tablets under the name Ambien. Lorex, a partnership of Searle and Synthalabo, a French pharmaceutical company, developed Ambien for the North American market. By the 2000s, it was widely prescribed and was the most popular hypnotic in the US. The widespread prescribing was due to its clinical efficacy, good pharmacokinetics, and perceived safety. Some researchers made statements like, it would seem to approach the ideal hypnosedative for the future. Knowledge of its potential efficacy in coma and brain injury patients appeared by 2000 due to a case in South Africa. In that case, a patient was accidentally given Zolpidem while in a persistent vegetative state. The patient woke up within 15 minutes and could talk to relatives for three hours. During the 2000s, concerns grew about Zolpidem's abuse potential and negative effects. Many reports showed physical dependence could develop with very large doses and a few 
reports suggested dependence may appear in medical settings. Because some people were using it for recreational purposes and even forging prescriptions to access the drug, a tightening of prescribing appeared in some cases. The change in prescribing practices was not universal. Even though it was often recommended, doctors focus on alternatives before considering Zolpidem. The World Health Organization determined Zolpidem had a higher abuse and dependence potential than previously suspected in the early 2000s. This led to an international scheduling in Schedule 4. A controlled release version called Ambien CR was approved 